What's going on everyone? So welcome to my latest video. This is my top 10 most anticipated films of 2023. I know I'm actually filming this video quite early. I'm filming this on December 20th of 2022. Usually I'll wait until January to do this, but um, I was looking at the schedule and I'm like, you know what? I'm pretty confident with this list. Um, so I'm going to give you guys my honorable mentions and then I'm going to give you guys number 10 to one being my most anticipated 2023. Um, your list is obviously going to be different than mine, um, and honestly, I'm very much so looking forward to hearing about your guys' top 10 most anticipated films of 2023 down below, because I'm sure that there's going to be some that I missed, or some that maybe I didn't hear about, but, um, you know, doing a deep dive on the schedule on Wikipedia, as well as on Letterboxd, these are the ones that I came up with. So, guys, enough exposition. Let's get started. So, kick things off, the honorable mentions. We have John Wick, Chapter 4. Quite excited about this film because I do like chapters one to three. I do kind of hope that chapter four is going to be the end though, because let's be honest, action franchises especially are very keen on lasting a little bit too long in terms of um, not knowing when to end. So I'm hoping that they know when to end. Um, and also the trailer came out and it does look pretty good. Um, next up in terms of honorable mentions, we have Wonka, which is uh, Paul King's latest film, which is the only reason why I'm actually pretty excited for um, Wonka. Paul King is the same director that gave us the Paddington films. Those were obviously great. Um, so I'm looking forward to see what he does next. And um, also I do like Timothy Chal Chalamet a lot. So that's why it's there. And then Barbie, which is directed by Greta Gerwig, who I quite liked in terms of her directing work of Lady Bird. Um, and then uh, Little Women, I think is solid. I do respect that movie, but I really liked Lady Bird. And then I also love the cast of Barbie. Stacked cast, but Ryan Gosling, I'm a huge fan of Margot Robbie. Um, so I, I'm quite looking forward to that movie. And then the last honorable mention, and this was so, so close to making my top 10. But um, the last honorable mention is Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. So to be quite honest with you guys, this reason why this didn't take the number 10 slot and instead has taken the last honorable mention is because when I saw the trailer, I, I, I'm excited for it for sure but I didn't realize how heavy that they were utilizing CGI. I'm hoping that it doesn't affect the film, but I always look at the Indiana Jones movies as like feats in terms of practical effects. Um, I absolutely love the original Indiana Jones trilogy, but I'm going in still with the open mind of, you know, Dial of Destiny. I'm hoping it's good, but I don't know. Well, we'll see. Again, looking forward to it, trying to stay positive, but I do have um, some nervousness to it. But um, anyways, guys, those were the honorable mentions. Now, Let's get started. So number 10, we have Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, part one. Christian McQuarrie's latest film, and then of course, Tom Cruise's latest film. I saw the behind the scenes of this when I saw Avatar The Way of Water and IMAX. They showed like, I think it was like an eight to 10 minute, um, you know, video of just him going off a cliff and then having a parachute. It's just, it's crazy stuff. I've seen the trailer too for this. Um, it looks quite good. And um, I liked the latest Mission Impossible as well. I actually own it on 4K and it's the only Mission Impossible that I own. So I'm looking forward to that, and especially because it's a part one of the finale. So apparently Dead Reckoning part one and then part two, they're going to be the last Mission Impossible movie. So I, I like that knowing that there's finality. So I'm curious about it. And Christopher McQuarrie is a very talented director. So... Let's see, uh, let's see how it is. But yeah, that's my number 10. Next up, number nine, we have Challengers, uh, which is Luca Guadagnino's latest film, the same director that Suspiria, Call Me By Your Name, The Slew of Others. But those two, oh, Bones and All, I almost forgot to mention. Um, he's a very talented director. Um, his last three films I've loved. Um, this is yet another one where I, I read the premise and I was like, okay, yeah, I'm in. Um, so when this hits, I will definitely be there day one. So excited for this movie. That's why it's my number nine. Next up, my number eight is Poor Things, which is Yorgo Lanthimos' latest film, the same guy that did Killing of a Secret Deer, The Lobster, The Favorite, and The Slew of Others. Um, I have one more of this director's work to watch, actually, before Poor Things, and then after watching Poor Things, I can then rank his work. But um, it's safe to say Yorgos Lanthimos is a an auteur. Like, he is a director that, when you read the premise of his films, you're like, okay, I you have my curiosity. Now... You got my attention once you actually watch the movie. And poor things upon reading the premise. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to be yet another uh, Yorgos Lanthimos hit. Um, I, I'm very excited for this. And it stars Emma Stone. Very much so excited. It was, I think, could be wrong about this, but I believe it was originally supposed to come out in 2022. Um, but 
fingers crossed. Hopefully it will actually come out for real in 2023. But um, yeah, that's my number eight. Next up, my number seven is Ridley Scott's latest movie, which is Napoleon, starring Joaquin Phoenix. I love history. I love Ridley Scott's films. I love Joaquin Phoenix. Pretty much, that's all I need to know. Um, let's be honest. That combination, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. And honestly, Ridley Scott has a wide range. But um, his last film, The Last Duel, was also like history-based. And that, I thought, was really, really good. So Ridley Scott showcases that doesn't matter how old you are as a director, you can still make hits. Um, so I'm looking forward to the point. I, it's probably going to come out towards the end of 2023. Um, although, who knows? Maybe they'll push it back to 2024. But fingers crossed. Hopefully, they stick with 2023. But yeah, Napoleon, it's my number seven. Next up, my number six is Dune. Part 2, Denis Villeneuve's latest film, the same director that did Sicario, Prisoners, Arrival, slew of others. Um, I'm a huge fan of Dune. I thought Dune was a great film. Um, I saw that twice in theaters, and I did actually uh, pick it up on 4K. And as of the filming of this video, I did watch it once on 4K. So I've seen it three times total, and uh, each time I find myself loving it more and more. Um, the second one, from what I read, my, uh, my wife, she's actually read um, Dune, and she said that the second half of the book is even better. So... I'm bracing myself. I am so, so pumped for this. I can't wait for this to come out. I think it's coming out in November 2023, so can't come soon enough. But um, yeah, Dune Part 2. It's my number six. Next up, my number five. Um, not going to lie. So my number five was actually on my um, most anticipated films of 2022, but it got pushed back. And I'll explain a little bit why. But um, my number five is View is a Free, which is Arya Astor's latest film, the same director that did Hereditary and, of course, Midsummer. Thing is with this movie is that two things. One, View is Afraid was originally titled uh, Disappointment Boulevard, which, not going to lie, I like that title a lot better than this current title. Other thing was that the reason why it got pushed back was that Ari Aster wanted to release it as a four-hour film, which I would have, of course, watched. But um, A24 apparently wasn't about it. So he had to, like, cut it down or maybe do reshoots. I'm not 100% sure in that regards. But, um... It sounds like something that is why it's getting pushed back to 2023. Um, but we definitely are getting it in 2023. We just don't know the length. Um, so I'm curious about that. But I'm very excited for this film, but also, again, kind of nervous because A24 is very open-minded from what I've heard in terms of, like, giving directors full control. Um, so for that to happen where it's like he wasn't able to release his, his full vision... Kind of curious about that. Although, to be fair, it did kind of happen with Midsummer, and it didn't really affect it, at least from my experience, at least, because I thought Midsummer was, you know, quite good. Um, but either way, it, it's a new Ari Aster film, and it also stars Joaquin Phoenix. So you already know I'm really excited. And I know I'm kind of cheating with this because, like I said earlier, it was on my top 10 most anticipated of 2022. But I have to include it with this because it technically is now coming out in 2023. So, yeah, anyways, long story short, that's why it's my number five. Next up, my number four is Asteroid City, which is Wes Anderson's latest film. Uh, same director did Grand Budapest Hotel, Fantastic Mr. Fox, Rushmore, many more. Honestly, I own um, pretty much all of Wes Anderson's films. Actually, yeah, I do. I own all of them except for French Dispatch. Um, waiting for that to come out on Criterion, fingers crossed. But he is a director that I, I, I personally have yet to see a movie where I was like, that was bad. You know, all of his work I find to be at least good and that's why for me just looking at the cast of asteroid city and seeing wes anderson directed it that's enough for me like I, I don't need anything else i don't even need to see the trailer when it once it drops i'm going to be seeing this day one i am so pumped for this film um and that is why it's my number four next up my number three um i did actually see the trailer for this in theaters my number three is oppenheimer which is um, christopher nolan's latest film similar to wes anderson i have yet to see a bad christopher nolan film that being said, I did enjoy Tenet quite a bit when I saw it a couple times in theaters and even once or, yeah, actually, yeah, once on 4K. But not going to lie, the second time I saw it on 4K, I didn't like it quite as much. In fact, um, I thought it was just solid, which is the lowest I, I think I've said about a Christopher Nolan film because most of them I say that they are good to great to masterful. Um, but, you know, that nonetheless is something that I wanted to know because... I am still very much so pumped for Oppenheimer because between the cast, 
the premise, Christopher Nolan, and then seeing the trailer. Oh my goodness. Actually watching the trailer in IMAX. Holy cow. Oppenheimer looks like it is going to be a great film. Um, it's dealing with time, which is something that, of course, we've all seen Christopher Nolan, um, you know, delve into with his other films. So looking forward to see um, him, you know, delve into a, you know, a film that doesn't really have much action, but I, I know is going to be quite engaging and it's probably going to be a feat of filmmaking. So I I'm very much still looking forward to Oppenheimer and that's why it's my number three. Next up, the last two. These two, I'm just going to give you guys a heads up. These two were originally on my top 10 most anticipated films of 2022, but they got pushed back, unfortunately. But my number two is Killers of the Flower Moon, which is directed by Martin Scorsese, the director of many, many films, but they do include Raging Bull, The Departed, Last Temptation of Christ, and again, as I said, many more. But um, this film stars Leonardo DiCaprio and many other actors. This is a film that I am so, so, so excited for. Um, I don't know when we're getting this in 2023. They haven't exactly given a date. But you best believe that it being a Scorsese film and um, his last film having been The Irishman. He, again, is yet another director on this list that showcases, like, it doesn't matter how old you are. You can still direct great films. And so that's why I have so much faith in the killers and the flower moon. Also just reading the premise, it sounds like it's going to be intriguing. Um, but yeah, that's why it's my number two. Next up, my number one for two straight years. Um, please come out this year. Please come out this year, Netflix. Just, just release it. Release, release it in theaters. Do what you did with uh, Glass Onion. But my number one, my number one, the one that I'm, uh, I'm going on about and how I want it to be in theaters, but I know it's not going to be. My number one is The Killer, directed by David Fincher. If you're new to the channel, I'm a huge, huge David Fincher fan. I absolutely love his work. I think he is one of the best directors, if not the best director, in my personal opinion, working today. Um, I, I think that what he does is just so, so immersive. He hijacks your eyes in the best of ways. Like just reading the premise of The Killer, it's like, could be solid, but then just seeing that, oh, it's directed by David Fincher, and oh, he has the cinematographer, oh, he has these composers. You just can't help but know that you're in good hands. And, um, you know, unfortunately, he is doing with Netflix. So it's probably not going to be in theaters. Or if it is, it's going to be in like a small indie theater. But, um, you know, I just, I, 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 I'm hoping that it does kind of do what Class Onion did, where it's like it has like a one week showing where, you know, it's in theaters for a week. But um, I'm, again, very much so excited for this. Oh, it also stars Michael Fassbender, which is another uh, plus. But, um, yeah. Guys, those are my top 10 most films of 2022. As you guys probably were able to tell, um, for me, these days especially, my anticipation is more so what's, you know, behind the camera in terms of who directed it, who's starring in it. Um, I don't really need to know the premise, to be quite honest with you guys, um, you know. So, yeah, but that's just me personally. Um, as I said earlier, I am very much so curious to hear your guys' most anticipated films of 2023. Down below, and as always, guys, don't forget the subscription. Notification bell, follow me down Letterbox, and I will uh, catch you guys later.